And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shake my hand out. Doop. And I'm just gonna let it die. I'm just gonna let it feel how it feels if I just shake my hand out and let it rest. And do you see how there's a little bit, there's some spaces between my fingers? And I feel really balanced in my hand. So I don't feel like I have a lot of weight in my first finger or a lot of weight in my, in my pinky. I feel like there's weight consistently in all four of my fingers. That's how we want to feel when we're actually holding the bow. Um, it's also a little bit easier if you don't want to go straight to the bow. You can use a pencil. In this case, I'm going to use a, a whiteboard marker. But um, So I'm just going to shake my hand out again. And I'm just going to feel how it feels if I was going to hold a stick-like object with really a lot of balance to my hand. So I've made some marks on my hand where I hold the bow. Again, you'll want to adjust things a little bit so that you, it works for your hand and your body. Again, my hands are really small. I actually don't even have a full-size cello because my hands are so small. But you'll notice that um, where, and I think what's the most important is these are the places where the top of the bow hits my hand. And on my first finger, on my index finger, the mark is just above that first knuckle. If you can see it, just above. And that means that I will still have lots of power because my first finger is actually gonna be my power finger. Power finger. I always kind of talk about this as being like, you're riding a bus and you want this to be your bus driver, not the drunk dude in the back of the bus to drive the bus. No. So we want our first finger to be in charge. So that is our number one finger to get in the right position. Um, and then it's almost straight across from there. We want, unlike the violin, we want our pinky to be hanging over the top of that bow. So we don't want it on top. If we were playing the fiddle, we want it on top, but we want a little bit more hand balance for the cello. There it is. So again, you want to kind of take note where I put my fingers pretty much very close to that first knuckle on all the fingers. For my pinky, it's right on the knuckle. For the ring finger, it's a little bit below. For my middle finger, it's pretty much in the middle. But that first finger, it's right above. Now, if I flip this over, you can kind of see what I'm doing with my thumb. My thumb is nice and curved. I want it to look um, like I have flexibility there, and that's what we want. If we get into what I call a banana thumb, then our whole hand becomes very rigid and our whole arm becomes rigid. What our, our goal is, our long-term goal, and this will take some, a lot of practice, so this, don't expect this to happen Im immediately, is to have a lot of flexibility in all of our different hinges, and our hinges being our thumb, our wrist, our elbow, and our shoulder. So if our thumb it has is a lot of tension in it and it looks like a banana, that's going to create tension all over my arm. So our first uh, way to combat that is really to make this nice and curvy so that I have some flexibility. You can see kind of where I touch the bow with my thumb. Um, some other things that will help and I'm going to go back to the, the bow now. Again, I don't want to feel like I'm holding the bow up. I want to feel like the bow is resting on the strings, and all I'm doing is, is guiding it. So here I am. I'm, again, holding the bow with the wrong hand on top of the stick, not touching the hair. Now I'm going to find that same placement. So I'm going to shake up my hand and let it die. It's dead. There's death. All right? And I am going to have a little bit of space between my fingers. I let this first finger touch just under the wire uh, placement. I have a wire here, you may not. But there's a piece of black leather, and that the top of that is where usually my first finger is touching. Again, that's my the finger that's gonna be in charge. And um, then my middle finger, my bad finger, <laughs> is gonna be touching the metal part, the ferrule. And I'm going to touch it just to the tip. So the tip of my middle finger touches that metal part. My ring finger kind of touches. I have a dot there. You may or may not have a dot or an emblem there. 
my ring finger touches that emblem, kind of fits right perfectly, and then my pinky just kind of slides next to it. Again, there's space between my finger. My pinky is on the bow, so it's not on top. It is hanging over. As I flip over, I'm gonna keep my thumb nice and curved. And this is hard to see on my bow because I have a nice squishy thing to kind of keep my bow, um, my thumb nice and relaxed. But I'm actually gonna touch right where the frog meets the stick. I'm gonna put my thumb just the tip of it. I'm gonna keep it nice and curved. And I'm gonna, to kind of use, there's kind of a shelf there, I call it, at the end of your frog. And I'm gonna have half of my thumb on that shelf and half of my thumb on the actual stick. Um, there's a product that I would recommend, especially for beginning cellists, but I know, you know, cellists of all different um, varieties use it. It's called the String Vision Bow Grip. It's about $10. It just slides right on your bow and it, it, it's a comfortable way to hold the bow. It shows you exactly where to put your thumb and it's nice and squishy. So I would highly recommend String Vision Bow Grip. You can get it on millions of online retailers. Maybe not millions, but several, more than zero. Um, the other thing I would recommend if, if you don't want to spend the money or you don't have it at this time, you can just use a regular rubber band and this will help to kind of make you feel a little bit more secure. I use this as what I call a seat belt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my rubber band, in this case I chose a pretty green one, you can use the color of your choice, and I'm going to set the whole rubber band inside of the frog. So as you hopefully can see, there's a loop on either side, there's a loop on the right side of the bow and the left side of the bow. I'm going to hold one side and I'm going to loop that loop around the screw and I'm going to go to the other side and loop it around the other side of the screw. Again, I'll show that one more time because that can be weird. It's like a craft project. I'll show it from this side this time. So I'm putting my rubber band through the frog. I have a loop on both sides. I'm going to hold it on one side. I'm going to put one loop through the bottom of the screw. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to loop it again here. What that does, that's going to be my seat belt for my ring finger. And that way I just feel a little bit more secure. You can use that along, maybe along with the string vision, but you can also use it on its own. And you don't have to use it forever, but for me, I just feel like, oh, I feel attached to this bow as opposed to, oh, I could drop the bow and I'm freaked out and so I'm creating more tension. Again, our goal is to be as loose and relaxed as possible.